It's time once again for the Real People Multi-Game Solitaire Mega Tournament. We are in the midst of the third propaganda campaign of um, A Distant Plane. And we are on the, our first card up is number two is dead. That's something that was very common in the U.S. news anyway uh, during the, the, I guess the, the, Conflict in Afghanistan is still going on, but in the heart of it, when it was kind of the big news, uh, it no longer is, it doesn't seem. But when it was the big news, oftentimes um, the number two would be dead, um, and then that number two gets replaced. So what did Pinky do on the card? Well, she did an Ops Plus Special Activity, which is rare for her. But she wasn't that interested in the events here. They mainly have to do with the Taliban. That doesn't really affect her directly. And also, she's not that interested in um, the airstrikes here. It just doesn't really, doesn't really interest her as much as kind of moving towards victory in a more direct way. And plus, she's thinking, you know, the Taliban might want to act on this. And so she doesn't, she's not too worried about the um, controversy here that would inhibit her her coalition's capability. So what she do? She moved her a base from coast and another one from the available forces down to the south here, um, trying to build up a base there. She feels like she's pretty good there. Um, you know, Sunny hasn't been giving her too much trouble, which I think might make her a little too lax. But she also did a lot of training, used most of the government's money. Pinky's always been good at spending money. And, uh, but then in return, added to the government's aid. It'll be interesting to see how Betty, what Betty Crocker makes of all of that. And it'll be interesting to see what Sonny decides to do. He can either act on this card and help himself or pass and work on the, the next card and um, kind of in, be more injurious to other people. Now, if he does pass on this, that's going to open up someone else, uh, probably, hmm, maybe Junior could remove remove some, some pieces and some money from him, but I don't know if that's in Junior's best interest right now, uh, given that Sonny is kind of the low man on the totem pole currently. And everyone else passed on the card. No one wanted to take the limited op nor the event uh, for a variety of reasons, which I could go into, but in the interest of moving on, let's move on instead. So we got Reapers here, that's up. Um, and then Night Raids is coming up. That's gonna make for some choices uh, for Betty Crocker. Is he want to? Is he going to want to act after the Taliban acts or not? Let's see what Sonny does first before we ask those questions. So Reapers consisted of um, Sonny doing one of his favorite things in the world, which is rallying. He loves to buttress his forces as much as possible. So he built up again in Pakistan now that the uh, tolerance has gone, or the Islamabad track has gone to tolerance. He's able to to um, rally there again, which is something he really needs to do, I think, in order to be successful. The uh, Taliban really needs Afghanistan. He also uh, infiltrated a, a government cube here, turned it to his side, and then used that as part of his rally to get another base down. So he's, you know, he's got a, he's starting to build up here more, which um, the government's got to be thinking about. The warlords aren't, I don't know, we'll see if they do anything about it or not, uh, Junior. But, yeah, he's getting this spot, so I, I could keep talking about that, but there's not a lot to say. He rallied. <laughs> okay, sorry. Um, there's a lot of background sound, and that makes that goes right into my mind and makes it more difficult for me to speak. Um, and then Junior, he got three bucks. I don't know that I moved his money up. One, two, three. He got three bucks from Sonny in order to limit the uh, airstrike capability, which is something Junior wouldn't mind doing anyway, especially since he's not going to be able to act on the next card. So that would have been three cards in a row Junior didn't act on. Did that, uh, created some controversy over the airstrikes, which caused them not to have an effect. Now we're going to go on to night raids, which is going to be all coin right in a row. Co uh, government then coalition. We'll see if they work together or not. They're both nearing victory, um, especially coalition there. But the government is also not not too far away, um, so we'll see if uh, it seems like there'd be an incentive for them to kind of gum up each other's works. Betty Crocker has a plan, so he passed this round, which is going to let Pinky do the first ops plus special activity. One thing I've noticed is that it's better if the coalition does this. You know, if the coalition and the the government are going to work together. Uh, if you're new to this game. 
I guess this is helpful. If you're not, you probably have already discovered this yourself. If the coalition and the government are going to work together, it helps if the coalition can go first, because then the, co the coalition can sweep and bring uh, people with the coalition in most situations, I guess, unless you're already in a spot with... Um, with insurgents. Uh, the, the coalition can sweep, bring government pieces with them, and then the government can then follow up with an assault. Whereas the government can't, um, can't bring coalition pieces with it in, uh, when it moves. Uh, it also can't bring coalition pieces with it uh, to assault, or it can't, it can't make them assault, but um, generally there's gonna be enough government cubes to take care of that anyway, for the most part. Uh, the coalition's more not, you know, as you can see here, is not going to have as much of a map presence. It's really the government cubes that are doing most of the heavy lifting. And Piki took the solo move to um, draw back in the south. She felt like she got the government established there and she could just focus her forces on, a, on an eastern offensive into um, Nuristan. Uh, that's, gonna, that's bringing her dangerously close here. If she can get Nuristan to support, she's actually going to be over the win line. Uh, we'll see what happens with Betty Crocker now. Betty Crocker is going to have have first dibs on this card. Interesting um, secondary effects since Pakistan is fairly they tolerate the the Taliban. This uh, this event is going to be really helpful to Sonny, and he's probably going to be able to do it because I think um, Betty Crocker is going to going to go ahead and do the ops plus special activity. Um, yeah, rather than take second fiddle on the next card. And then Sonny's going to be able to nail this card for, for basically he just gets to move this this way and then get six bucks. So he gets, you know, a special power, six dollars, and then he's going to remain eligible and be able to act on the next card, which is Quran burning. So we'll, we'll get to that when we get to that. So Betty Crocker did something of a wily move. He moved <laughs> the pieces the government brought to deal with. Um, the Taliban forces in Nuristan. He moved them off to go fight the warlords over to the west in Baghlan. Um And then moved into Orzgan here. Uh, he was going to remove the support from Paktika. I like saying these names. In order to uh, transfer more money to the patronage uh, from from the government aid, but instead to kind of appease uh, Pinky a little bit, I don't know if that's possible at this point because he's left her forces dangerously vulnerable there, um, but to, to appease her a little bit, he just upped the population instead, which does something else. It also makes this a, a much juicier uh, place, but gave her a point on the, the meter, so she's just one away. He's actually two away now, with all of his conquests on his turn. So not a bad turn for Betty Crocker. Um, created a target right here, which isn't the end of the world if he loses it, especially if he succeeds in the north. Um, you know, maybe a place for, for the, the coalition and um, uh, the Taliban to, to struggle. Um, kind of hindered her some because she's, not, she's gonna have a hard time holding on to Nuristan without the government support. And then um, also messed with the warlord. So he messed with er everyone but the Taliban there. Thanks to Junior's activation of the Quran burning, the, uh, gov the support for the, the government has go dropped down from 30 to 24. That is not making Pinky very happy there. Uh, she tried to offer him some aid not to do it, but, um, well, not aid, she gets a thing where she can give him a die roll of resources, but he didn't think it was worth it. He wants some, some solid money. Um, didn't get it from her, because she, I don't think she can give it to him. And uh, Betty Crocker and Sonny weren't gonna foot the bill for that. So that was harsh for her. Uh, did we talk about the mega rally already? Yep. So now we're going to move on, and it's going to be Pinky's turn to move again. Ooh, she's got a choice of two cards to go first on, so that's going to be nice. And it's going to be coalition and government on the next card. And once again, we have a situation where the coalition and government could do a one-two punch. They could do a sweep assault one after another with, with very little chance for the enemy to respond. Actually, no chance at all. Uh, because they're both ineligible right now. So it could be coalition acts on this card, government passes, then government acts first on the next card. Or the other way around. They could, you know, the coalition could pass, then the government could act, and then the coalition could act on the next card. Unfortunately, they're not getting along too well right now. 
Um, I'm going to have to turn off the camera and let them talk a little bit. Maybe they can work out their differences, especially since um, Pinky is in a little bit of trouble. If the Taliban can attack her, some of her forces are going to go to casualties, and half of those don't come back. Um, generally, the, the, the coalition wants to have some government forces as like a meat shield, a human shield, to keep their own precious brown cubes uh, from getting destroyed. They ended up making a deal. It started with Pinky passing, getting some more money for the, the government coffers. And then Betty Crocker uh, did what he agreed to do, which was he brought in some, some troops into here. He transported them in there, and then he did a sweep. So now uh, Pinky should be able to assault and get rid of the Taliban. What Betty Crocker also did, though, was brought in more troops than he needed, which he took out of Paktika. Uh, incidentally, this this uh, kind of like this province on the border of Pakistan that he had plumped up last time he, he got to go. And then he swept all of them that didn't need to be here into Bag Halan. So by he, he was able to kind of keep to his deal with Pinky and still help himself and maybe also kind of mess up Pinky as well down the road. We'll see. He's a cagey one, that Betty Crocker. Pinky made a move that Betty Crocker wasn't expecting. Betty Crocker thought she was all hot to eliminate these Taliban fighters there. Instead, she went with a train, so she put down a bunch of police, got this place really protected, uh, surged out her own troops on there. So she has very few, she only has one set of troops on the, on the map and only four pieces total. The other three are bases. Uh, that put her over the line. Now, I don't know that she's going to be able to keep there, um, but, you know, that's what she did. And she got all of the government's forces on the table, which is pretty great for her. Um, and also brought Kabul back to, back to uh, support for the government. Sunny ended up being the only person to act on the Mullah Omar card. So Mullah Omar, nothing happened actually with him. Um, he did an obstacle special activity, another big rally. He's building up his forces here to kind of keep the government and the coalition's focus there. Um, Meanwhile, he's able to build up in Pakistan, and then also Zabul, and then he's getting this, these forces amassed over here in Bad Geese, which he can uh, threaten a lot with. So, government's attention's here. He's coming in there. Not bad for Sonny. Uh, Junior passed once again. He's passed a lot and has been very quiet this campaign, just kind of waiting for his moment, and his moment's going to be coming up at break time, I think. Um... And then Betty Crocker had a choice to make. He almost did the Mullah Omar event. It would have really messed Sonny up a lot. But he was looking at his money, and he's at two. So he decided just to pass in order to, to get some money going, maybe rest himself uh, so that he's ready, probably after the next card, to do some act that could, could potentially uh, get him the victory. He's close enough that if he can act at the right time, uh, he might be able to pull it off. Uh, maybe if the card after this is not propaganda, then the next card would be propaganda. Possibly. But it's break time, and it's Junior's break time. So let's see what he does. So the break time was all Junior's. Both uh, coin forces passed for different reasons. Pinky did because she didn't want to necessarily use this event. Uh, if she had used it, she would have removed some gorillas, but she thought that was a little too nice to Betty Crocker. And in light of the way he's been treating their uh, semi-alliance, uh, she didn't feel like being so nice to him. And then he himself passed because he's, one, there was the money issue, right? Uh, getting rid of the gorillas would be nice, but he's going to have first dibs on the next card. And so that, that seemed better than to take this event that might just remove one Gurria or six or anywhere in between one and six. Um, let's see. He moved, uh, Betty Crocker moves quite a bit down the track due to uh, Junior's actions. Uh, he, Junior, marched a little bit to kind of contend in some areas. Uh, oh, yeah, he was going to march this guy in too, and that would go active. Yep, which would remove this. You're seeing how he did it, and then that's going to go up another two, uncontrolled. Um, 
marched in to just kind of shift around, put a piece here to kind of start operating in this area, and then did three suborns, two of which he got Sonny to pay for. So that was a pretty good deal for him. The one that Sonny didn't pay for is right here in Herozgan. Um, and then Nost, and then here he paid for. Uh, so that's going to... Um, that's going to make for some interesting situations to the east. So now let's move on. I shouldn't just keep talking all the time. Poppy crop failure. So the poly... <laughs> so the poppy crop failure, which is one of the funnest cards to say, I recommend you try to say it at home um, now or when you're playing the game. It's really fun to read aloud. Poppy crop failure. Um, so I... So I'm just talking so slow, I apologize. So Betty Crocker um, just do some sweeps. So he swept back into here, took control over this, and finally made his move into the far north here in Conduz, and kind of regained some of his lost ground. He's still not quite there to that magic 36, and I really feel like the propaganda card's got to be coming. Everyone else passed, so now we'll move to SEAL Team 6. And there we have it. This could be another win for Pinky if someone doesn't stop her. Uh, I've been playing this in little bits and pieces because I've not had a block of time and I wonder if maybe someone would have remembered that she was over there before, if not. But she's going to have a chance to move. She gets ops plus special activities. Probably what she's going to take. I don't see any reason why she would take anything else. And then I guess it's going to be up to Sunny to try and stop her, maybe with Junior's help. They're going to just have a limited op to work with. That's going to be tough. We'll see. Okay, so Pinky, she put this to support through a, a train, which gave her a civic action. And then... Um, withdrew all of her forces home. So that's going to put her at 37. I don't know if there's a way for Sunny to break that with a limited operation or an event. Let's see the event. Yeah, that's not going to do it. So he could, I think, rally here and do Sharia, which would remove four. Or, hmm, I think that's maybe his best hope. I'm going to shut it off and look at it, and then I'll come back. Yeah, there's not even, she, uh, Sunny can't even rally in Kabul, 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 because um, he doesn't have a base there, uh, so he can't, well, he could rally there, but he couldn't do Sharia there. Uh, so even with that, even if he were able to flip that up top position, that wouldn't be enough to do it. Um, yeah, that happened fast. It was just too bad. I, I was hoping to play this more. I was really enjoying this, and I was kind of in it for the long haul. But um, but yeah, I I think I've been I've been playing this like five minutes here, five minutes there, just because of how things have been, and like maybe like a card at a time, uh, which, and so I I didn't really quite realize that there was a support that she was past the line there. I'd forgotten about that. Um, not that I and Betty Crocker maybe would have caught it. I don't know. Also, I think, he, but he also could have just been tied up with things, feeling a little bad that he had kind of messed with her so much in the past um, and was just kind of focusing on his own goal. He was, he just needed one more move, I think, to kind of take what he needed. Um, I guess I'll just recheck points to make sure everything is okay. So you got four coin control, six, 10, 12. 14, 15 coin control plus 15 patronage. Yeah, he's in the right spot. And uncontrolled, I, I don't remember the math problem, but three, five, uh, six, seven, eight, nine, nine. For some reason, I have more. 10. Yeah, I think he might have gotten something back. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't lower it when he took some control. Um, yeah. And then. Yeah, definitely not that much opposition. I'm not even going to busy uh, bother counting it. Oh, I guess I should count it for points. I'll do that later. I have to go again. Alrighty, so I've tallied the score. Um, here we have it, and this column here is the the score for Inning Abyss, um, the ranking score, not the score in game. And here is the the ranking score for a distant plane. So as you can see here, right off the bat, Pinky won both games, so she's at six. There's no way anyone can contend with her and knock her out of the spot. So that, that puts me in a bit of a quandary, but I'll get to that later. I wanna talk about the rest of the ranking. Um, 
what we see here is everyone has a total of two points, every other person. Uh, it was close between Sonny and Betty Crocker. They were, I think, one point away. And Junior, since he has the kind of the two different victory conditions, he was actually f equal to Betty Crocker on one condition, but um, far less on the money. And that could have, you know, shifted pretty easily too. So I, I think it still could have been anyone's game in a, in a lot of respects had it continued, but it did not, it ended. And Pinky was the winner. Betty Crocker second, Sonny in third. He, tend, he seems to like the third place position. And then Junior last. So much to learn about this game. It was, uh, I really wish it had continued. <laughs> um, but I, I trust I'll be able to play it in the future and with humans too. So that that helps. You learn more about a game with humans. Well, you le well no, no, you learn different stuff about a game with humans in Solitaire. Um, even if you like games with humans and tend to play that way, I recommend Solitaire because you can get into the game in a different way than you could otherwise. But um, there's a, you know, this game with any game with asymmetric sides, it really, you kind of have to get to know a side and how to play it. But um, I, I trust with repeated plays that I'll be able to learn more. And I learned a lot just in this one playing. And even about the other games in the series too. There's a lot I, I neglected to do that I could have done. So let's talk about the interesting situation we're in going into the next game because we know Pinky's going to be in the finals, right? So I kind of have two choices. My plan was to play Cuba Libre next with all four of these individuals. So one choice would be to, I guess, bring someone else in in Pinky's place. It doesn't really make sense to have Pinky play a four-player game since she has no hand in this, or you know, no real direct personal incentive in who wins unless she, like, like someone better than the other people, which I'm sure she does, but I don't know that I want that kind of taint in the game. Uh, since she wouldn't necessarily be driven to win, um, she would just be playing on someone else's behalf. And this game is really about the, well, one of the important things of the game is the intricate balance between the four different asymmetric sides. And if she has, you know, is just pl pretty much playing for someone else to win, that's going to be unfair for everyone else uh, playing. Or actually the other two people who she doesn't want to win. And I guess it's unfair for the person she's helping to because they're getting an unfair advantage. And if, assuming everyone wants fairness, which the real people multi came Solitaire Mega Tournament does not claim to be fair, uh, we still try when we can. So. I either replace her with someone else, um, which I need to incentivize them somewhat, because even if that person wins, you know, someone's going to get more points than them on this ranking scale, right? Unless I set them all to zero, and then just have the winner take it. But then that makes the former two games not important for these three, necessarily. It's kind of like if the new person could just take it. So I either have to do that, or... I have to um, come up with a three-player game, so we'll just see. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna decide that right now. Um, I really wish again. <laughs> I wish I had gotten past the third propaganda card. We got. We got about halfway through the the full game. I mean, the game is designed that it could end in the first propaganda. So I guess that's not even true necessarily. But I was kind of looking forward to the, like the long development that this game offers. The longer development this game offers than the other coin games. Those are much shorter. Um, definitely a, 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 the game feels more serious to me than the others, even though they're all serious situations that involve uh, people's ideologies and death. But this one's a little more closer to home, I suppose, and I've, I've been present for the events, um, even if it's just through the news and whatnot. But um, lots of fun. I hope I can we figure out a way to do Cuba Libre next, but I, you know, I might have a good three-player game that's kind of a, of the same theme. Uh, Battle for China, for example, has supports three players, but it has a sort of like there's one group that works together, I think, and then another player. So I don't think that's quite going to be what I want either, uh, especially since they all have the same number of points. It seems like they should kind of be. A little more even footing. But I'll, I'll look through my collection, do some thinking, and get back to you. And see you next time on the Real People Multi Game Solitaire Mega Tournament.